Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. Yay! Whoop, whoop, whoop. How much fun can we have today? <laughs> so today I found this wooden DIY bangle. And I thought that's not gonna that is gonna be a nice challenge um, to get an interesting result. Now, some of you are gonna be going, Michelle, you haven't gessoed that. No, I haven't. So I'm going to do that now. And then, um, while I let that dry, because it only takes about 20 minutes for it to dry, um, I will then I'll mix up some paint. And I'm going to show you how I do that, because I realise it's been quite a while since I last um, did do any paint mixing on my channel. And there's started to be a lot of questions in the Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group about what do you use, how do you mix it, things like that. And you know what? Um, I've just got a foam brush here with my gesso. And um, the foam brush is wet, so just adding a little bit of moisture with the foam brush. Um, one of the things that I got out of being involved in the Facebook groups when I first started pouring was being able to ask questions of those that are in the group, those that are getting the results that, the, that I liked and I desired, um, and being able to you know, get a, you know, ask things like, oh, what colours did you use there? And, oh, what sort of recipe do you use to get that many cells? And, um, and so that's one of the reasons I set up the Acrylic Pouring for Fun group. Um, you know, we all learn somewhere and I'd really appreciate it if those of you that have been painting for a while, um, you know, give people a chance to ask their questions. But I say that and um, I totally get that some people get a bit annoyed at questions like, how do I start? What do I do? How do I do things? What do I, you know, what do I need to buy? And things like that. Um, so if you are a beginner, and you're just starting to join groups and starting to ask questions. What if you were to ask questions that kind of indicate that you have actually watched a few videos. You do have some idea of what's going on. But you'd like a little bit more information. Like, um, how many of you use... Flow troll, and if so, you know, where do you get it from? Or um, does anybody in this group use PVA? And if so, what do you what do you mix it with? What types of paints do you use? What sort of results do you get? Show me the results you get from painting with PVA. Rather than just Give me the answers. I don't know anything and I'm a beginner. Um, and we have, you know, most of us that have been painting for a while have watched hundreds of videos on YouTube. Now, just putting in some flow troll. Um, and we've watched hundreds of videos. We've collected data. We've experimented ourselves. So if you give it a go and then come in and say, hey guys, I'm doing this mixture um, and I'm not getting any cells. Does anybody have any ideas? You're more likely to get lots and lots of response and help and assistance from the seasoned painters. Um, then if you just go, tell me what to do and how to do it, because I can't be bothered researching. 
okay this is an experimental game guys you can see by me mixing this paint here i'm not measuring anything i have a rough rough very rough um amount that i use and that's roughly twice as much paint as flow troll and then water to the right consistency <laughs> really really rough and it does vary from um from paint color to paint color now most of the time i stick to the reeves paint um and i use the fine artist quality stuff <clears throat> i know that people out there that have done really amazing paintings with house paint i know people out there who have done really amazing paintings with poster paint you know the kids stuff that you use at kindergarten daycare type stuff um but give it a go have a play start with what you have in the house if you have pva and house paint start there that's how i started go back to my video number one <laughs> you'll see how i started um and you know the more quality you want the better quality products you need to start using um personally i've never used pouring medium other than the decor art one um and that that's because i choose not to pay for it uh Liquitex pouring medium apparently gives really good results and I choose not to spend my money that, that way I'm actually doing a painting a day guys this it's not cheap <laughs> if you want to sponsor me I've got a donate button link in my in the description of all my videos if you'd like to contribute to my channel I'll be super grateful um anyway for those of you that are starting out ask ask intelligent questions not um not i'm trying to bludge off you but i'm trying to learn from you does that make sense i hope so anyway so that's there you go i've just mixed some paint as we spoke the i do find though like i mix it to the consistency that i like and then I tend to find that within half an hour I need to add a little bit more water just to get it to stay at that if I don't pour it straight away anyway <clears throat> now that I've had that big rant <laughs> um, always go through and check the consistency of your paints before you start if you've watched my channel for a while you know there's times i forget to do that how's this this looks almost identical to the decor art metallic emerald um, which is a color i absolutely adore this color is actually made from viridian hue uh, and iridescent medium so there you go guys have a play mix your colors together see what you get um quite often when i'm doing my mixing of colors when i do my play i'll just put two colors down onto a piece of paper and mix them together and literally on the paper and see what they do to each other um with mixing colors this color here is uh viridian hue no it's not it's grass green grass green mixed with uh, deep yellow now compare that to exactly the same grass green but mixed with lemon yellow the two green they start with the same base green color but depending on which yellow i added got me those so play with your colors do yourself little charts i've got a um i did this up a long time ago um using the three base colors that i had um uh, renoir 
crimson red, deep yellow and cobalt blue. And I mixed them and added white and did, so that's a 50-50 mix of those two. 33, 66, 66, 33. And I really got a sense of what the colours did to each other. And then I added white to them to see what they did. And I did the same with the yellow and the blue. And I did the same with the red and the blue. And really got a sense of what combinations create what colours. So when it comes to playing with paint, guys, please, please, please have some fun. Explore. Pretend you're a kid again. It's not that horrible. I dare you. Give it a go. <laughs> anyway, talking about giving it a go, let's get some paint onto this. My uh, gesso is basically dry because, you know, gesso dries fast anyway. And um, the cool thing about wood is it absorbs moisture. So we now have a base to start from. So, I've got this, this is a McDonald's cup lid, and as you can see, it's been thrashed. They blow down my driveway. I live five doors away from a McDonald's, and um, as you can imagine, I get junk blow down my driveway. So, I use them. I am grateful for the donations of the imbeciles that drop rubbish. How does it get any better than that? Now there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of crimson red and iridescent median left in here. Not much. Very little. But it's enough to put a little bit of a sparkly pink into this. So into that I'm going to pour a drop of silicon. And... Just... Mix it a little bit. <laughs> and then I'm going to pour in some Prussian blue. Now this is a very dark blue. But when it hits that... Let's see if I can show this to you. Look at the, the purple that it's creating already. When it hit that pink. And then I'm going to add some silver. And then I'm going to put a little bit of silicon into this beautiful green. Stir that through. And pour that on there. Now, I've been tossing up. How should I do this? What should I do? What order should I do it in? How should I get it so that it um what's the word? <laughs> Looks good. Um, so let's zoom you in a little bit. Now, the cool thing about this bangle is it doesn't have any flat sides except the internals. So, I'm actually going to pour it as if I was pouring a cup. Um, some of you will have been watching my mugs collection. And... With that, I just pour it around the rim. Now, with the mugs, I try not to let it go inside the mug because, you know, that's not where you want the paint on a mug. Not so important on a bangle. So, 
so the target really is to get the whole thing covered and have some fun doing it. And hopefully this cup lid is destroyed enough that it lets the paint run out. <laughs> Make sure that the outside is completely covered, which it's not. When you're working with odd shapes in 3D, the paint doesn't seem to draw in evenly, which is fine. You just need to be aware of it and prepared to deal with it. Now that is looking super cool. Um, see, at the bottom, not all of it is covered. That's the important part with 3D objects is to make sure the whole thing gets covered. And even when you're working on a canvas, it's a 3D object. So, I now have enough paint on there, as you can see, for the outside. And I don't need it to do any more, don't need to add any more paint. What I do need it to do <laughs> is... um to dry without me holding it because that would not be fun let's just make sure we got a clear view of this look at that that is funky i like it um now the one thing i do know is that that is not going to give me a good result so i'm kind of left holding the baby really what would you sit on <laughs> tell me now so i can go and get one please <laughs> anybody got any ideas Well, that might work. The top of my water bottle. Um, I'm going to fill that bit of white in though first. All right. Any more there? Okay. So let's set that on there. Um, and that doesn't really work for you guys, does it? So what's required? What can I do here? That's a slight side on for you. And I am, because I put silicon in, I am going to go around and put some heat on and just see if there's anything that needs a little bit of TLC. Now I'm making sure that the flame is far enough away so that it's not cooking the paint. It's just warming it, popping any air bubbles. Oh, 
Oh. I don't know if you guys can see that. I've got air bubbles forming on the surface. Maybe I should have left the gesso dry a bit longer. Eek. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. Yeah. So I'm just using a push pin and trying to pop these bubbles. Certainly hasn't created any cells that I'm excited about. And it doesn't seem to be popping. Okay. Yeah. That's popped it, and that's popped it. Oh, I'm excited about this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down. So that what was facing down before is now facing up. And that's something not quite working here. And I am going to pause the video and see if I can create something a little better for it to sit on. So I'll be back in a minute. All right. So what I've done, <laughs> I've wrapped a piece of um, masking tape inside out around and put little chips of wood um that i cut <laughs> the, you know these things that you get with your canvases that are supposed to help you stretch your canvas and i've never been able to make them work well they chop up quite nicely to make little matchstick like things so um it's kind of hopefully only sitting on the internal point of that. So, uh, I'm hoping that it will dry. Let's see if I can get you a good view. I'm going to turn it around. Look at that. Bit fiddly. And I smudged my finger on this bit here. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of paint out of the pot and dribble and hope it fills in that. That spot and doesn't look quite so obvious. Got a chance of either it looking really hideous or nobody ever noticing. Unless, of course, they watch the video and know I did it. So there we go. I'm going to leave that to drain, to drip, to dry, and I will have a greeny, bluey, pink bracelet. How cool is this? And you'll be able to see it better once it's dry. So, there we go guys. I'll be back when it's dry. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I don't destroy it when I move it off my painting spot. And uh, 
I'll be back once it's dry. And that for you is in three, two, one. All right, well, this has dried beautiful. I think it's really gorgeous. Um, even the inside's a bit funky. I must say, there's a couple of little bumps where the paint just kind of pulled and I didn't catch it in time and clean it up. But that's okay. I like it. It's shiny. It's glassy. And it's fun. So there we go, guys. You too can have a fun and home painted yumminess to wear just to brighten up that little black dress <laughs> or that pair of jeans or whatever you want to brighten up just pop down and grab yourself one of those wooden beats and you know what there's actually if you go into any second hand shop I bet you will find old ones that are already decorated that you could easily just paint over and you probably get them for like 50 cents or something insanely cheap um, and they wouldn't be as rough as this one on the inside maybe I should have sanded it before I painted it oh well how's it getting any better than that well I adore this and I am on a bit of a mission at the moment I um I'm going to Japan. How cool is that? And um, so this might come with me and come play in Japan. That would be fun. Um, so I am having a bit of a painting fest to make sure I've got a week's worth of videos for you while I'm away. Um, I'm also going live tomorrow. So if you are signed up on my sign up, um, you will know when that is. If not then you might just be lucky if you subscribe to spot me go live tomorrow um i would say it's it'd probably be about i don't know 10 hours 12 hours maybe after this video is uploaded so come play with me check out how much fun we can have and um what could you create that you haven't even thought of yet i was thinking maybe you know napkin rings does anybody do napkin rings these days i know i don't but <laughs> this sort of reminds me of a napkin ring you could do that would be fun anyway so thank you for joining me how much fun can you have and come play with us on acrylic pouring for fun this month is in through or from the bathroom or for the bathroom so anything to do with bathroom whether it's something you used to pour through something that you can then use in the bathroom whatever maybe it's just that you used a silicon product from the bathroom rather than the bedroom I don't know up to you <laughs> but come play acrylic pouring for fun and look it's already got an m on it for mickey how's it getting any better all right guys i adore you all have fun bye bye